Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah, I need to share some problem. No, it's all right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Shall we start? Uh, yes, sir, you can start. Okay. So, good evening to all. As usual, I'll start with a short case first. I hope my screen is visible to you. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Okay, that is something which came it's in. Sir. Okay, okay, right. Right. <clears throat> in fact, this is a case given to me by Dr. Chase and Dr. Vaishak. This is a story of a 50 year old chronic smoker. He gives his step right hemiplegia two years back from which he moved, but details of which is not known. Now he proceeded with acute onset of giddiness, followed by a binocular diplopia one week back. The diplopia was more on looking to the right side. And his keep his right eye screwed to avoid diplopia. He is not his facial deviation to the right side one day later. So short history, I could say a dizziness for a binocular diplopia, more on looking towards the right side and facial deviation to the right one day later. This is the video of the patient. Another <laughs> Okay, he had left element facial. Would you want to see the eye movement once again? Or you can make a diagnosis from the eye movements. You want to see again? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll show you. Can I add to the one? Can I add to the one? The patient is looking towards the left side now. Okay. Okay. Okay, pen and open. 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 Another <laughs> Okay, where is the localization in this patient? Anyone who would like to give an opinion? We are right with Ray. No, I want the localization in the sense that I agree with you, but I want um, I don't know what are the findings why would you say localization? The kids are uh, not full towards left side. He has got a skewed deviation probably, or I don't know whether it's because of superior restriction on the right side because of muscle palsy. He has got a right-sided ptosis. Okay. Right-sided ptosis, and he has got a bilateral eye because the, there's an adduction lag towards the left side. And the right is not adducting, and uh, convergence is almost normal on the left side. Correct. What you said is correct. Right eye is lower. The ptosis part, we are not very sure because when the eye is lower, 
daily lots of comes to need in it okay there is a restriction of ocula movement to left side uh, both the left and the right and towards right side left eye is not adducting right eye swing up taking stimulus or looking to the left side also there is some abducting this stimulus coming and uh, there is right eye is lower compared to that of the left so your opinion is uh, uh, by that line i know i know i know by that line any anything else smell of but from by that line no Okay, it's not so skewed division could be because of uh, yeah, but skewed division can be there, maybe part of I, you know, or as is the place where it's some restriction of superior rectus muscle from the principle, mm -hmm. you don't know. Anyway, that right is correct. But when you look to the left side, you can add a tongue on it. Can add a tongue on it. Not to the left side. Both of these are not moving fully. Left is also. ിറ്റിസ് either bilateral ino with left case uh, left case palsy or could be one and half syndrome not one and half because this bilateral adduction because it's a adduction lag on the right side and true in in, in bilateral in one and half also the adduction be restricted bilaterally adduction but bilateral. in uh, ino uh, And that means left gaze palsy plus he has got the right eye. That means um, uh, left eye, you know. That means his left eye is not adapting. Left you gaze palsy means you should, check, you should check the eye one at a time. But that won't help. Yeah. Seeing what will not help in eye, you know. Because in that had this been a had this been a. Even closing one eye, even say you know that will not adduct. But it can be one day of syndrome because because it left eye is palsy, causing failure of abduction on the left side, failure of abduction on the right eye, and left MLF affection because of the same MLF, which is left failure of abduction on the left side. So both abduction failure and left abduction failure. It could be in one-half syndrome also. In one-half syndrome, one movement should be normal, no? The abduction on the right side should be normal. And that is normal here. Abduction on the right side is normal. That may be because of the... Uh, because the Schering's law is getting an advantage because of the... Yeah, still the abduction is normal, no? So it happens it can be... Uh, Whatever it is, the abduction is normal. Means that muscle is working fully well. Any other opinion? So possibility left one and half syndrome is is the asset, or as Joey said, bilateral eye no with the left lateral rectus weakness, or bilateral eye no with the left lateral gaze palsy. All three are possible in this patient. Okay, so let us just for understanding the purpose. I just found this diagram for you. So this is the given left PPR from mid posterior abducens in nucleus. It supplies left lateral like rectus through the MLS supplies the right middle rectus. This is on the right side again the same pathway. Okay, let's think about I want the absent row first. Please see here. That is the PPR of plus left MLS. So what will happen if there is affected? We go to the lesion of the left VPR. There is failure of abduction of the left eye, failure of abduction of the right. Because the MLF is affected on this side, that abduction also goes. So what happens means 
both abductions is lost, left abduction is lost, but only abduction is on the right side as is our patient. Okay, so that's a possibility. Second possibility is that if you believe the umbrella, that alone will explain, it cannot explain because there is a failure from the left side. So it would implicate a BPR from the left side. BPR is pain, that means it is left sided. Already the attraction is lost on the right side because of the bilateral them. So BPR is lost, means left attraction is also lost. That's the second possibility. So where, or it could be due to the involvement of the bilateral lamella plus lateral rectus. Both cannot be differentiated. Bilateral lamella plus left lattice palsy or bilateral lamella with left lateral rectus along with that cannot be differentiated from the, the with this spine. Left lateral rectus along with the MLF is more unlikely. It's unlikely because uh, the left lateral rectus alone has to be affected, it has to be in the nucleus. Yeah, that means the abuse in nucleus, it's in the body, it's only selective lateral rectus, as you said directly. More often to produce a gaze policy. But theoretically, these are the possibilities. Okay. So, in the end, theoretically, this can't be differentiated. But logically, what you said is correct, more likely that is likely to produce a gaze policy. So, let us see, the, let us look at the picture once again. It is not lateral rectus policy plus bilateral eye, you know, because it is not one of syndrome also because. See, the left eye, right eye is failed to abduct, abduct. The left eye is abducting a little more than that. If it is a gaze palsy causing the restriction towards the left side, it should be equal. The abduction field on the right side and the abduction field on the left side should have been equal if it is a gaze palsy because it's a supranuclear, supranuclear lesion. So that means it is not a gaze palsy. That's the first conclusion on the left side. Or there may be left palsy, submit something else. Pure gaze palsy is unlikely. So it is not one and the absent. One and the absent means left case plus right sided and left. So that's possibility sustained. Now, other possibility, so sorry, other possibility remains is that left case palsy plus bilateral amyla or left lateral rectus plus amyla. More logically, left case palsy. So let's investigate this now. This is lesion, the patient follicles on the left side. There is no other lesion seen. And the other picture also, there is not much economy. It's some suspicious side, but it's not very really economy. Same thing, sagittal cut also not. So there is in fact the rotational colliculus and probably bilateral MLF which we are testing this picture. Probably adjoining gay center should have been must I know have been or might have also been affected to explain the abduction field of the left. Now, how to explain these findings? Let us see. Failure of abduction to the left side and left abductions left, left gaze palsy as you know. Now, how to prove this point in this particular patient? If you do the oclic filing, if you find that the eye is abducting fully, then we can be sure it is due to gaze palsy. But again, if it is not, it may be sixth nerve or it may be gaze palsy also. If you are able to move the eye fully, abduct fully during oclic filing maneuver, that means it is not a lesion in the sixth nerve. How in the case parts you would be center involved? It's about that. Then there is as you as Joy says, failure of elevation of the right eye compared to the left side. It can be due to either a partial third nerve due to right superactus involvement or a skew with the right eye lower than the left eye up. How to sort it out? For that, you have to do the duction movement. If it is due to skew deviation, duction will be normal. If it is to the restriction due to superior actor's weakness, the restriction will be up. Okay, so these are the findings in this patient. Any questions regarding the OCLA movement?
So this is just to preserve your old knowledge of his policy, one day of syndrome, etc. Any doubts? Okay, shall I go to the next case? Any audible to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is no reply coming from the other side. Yes, I'm wondering. Okay, is it clear now? Shall I go to the next case? Yes, sir. Yeah. So this case is actually belongs to Dr. Jamai. This is a story of a 32-year-old woman. She has a progressive imbalance while walking for the last five years. She has been in coordination of hand, both the, her, her hands for the last three years. Disaptoria for two years. There is no positive families. Patient is not born of consanguineous panic. Parentage. This is the moment. This restriction of five moment in all directions. First, the kinase were normal. And palate normal. Known in the upper limbs and lower limbs are normal. Power also was normal. There is tenderness in coordination. So only a power went up in between. I, I will assume. I, I, am I audible to you now? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will start with the video presentation. Just one minute. I will start from where I stopped. Palatote, Mola, Hare. Okay. Power was normal in coordination bilaterally. The only person the power was normal. Patient test was closely abnormal. Detail the upper lips are normally elicitable. Only knee jerks are slightly on the viscous side. And we checks were absent. Interesting yang we check you get adductor jerk coming up. Mandar was indefinite.
primary myalgia sensations are all normal ിയും neuropathy makes it uh, that means lesion is both central and peripheral ms everybody is central and system involvement so it's some difficulty in ms progressive and ms expansion mitochondrial is a good possibility yes but what type of mitochondrial disease you have in mind anyway uh, this is a uh, progressive external ophthalmoplegia plus plus okay that's a possibility okay So, what do you want me to do now? Celebrating these things. So, the MRI was done. This is the MRI. Shows there is some atrophy of the cerebellum. You can make out here. You can see the permeant atrophy here. Or prominent in this cut. This is the even. So, what will you need? But confirm whether the peripheral neuropathy is present or not. No. So in CS yes. person, we showed decreased CMF amplitude from both peripheral. If it was normal, if the latency is normal, and since the squirrel was absent by that, mm-hmm. like they did not do the superficial neuropathy, anyway, we just got evidence of sensory neuropathy affecting the overlay. 
So two things are controlled, cerebellar involvement plus peripheral neuropathy. So what else do you want to do? The serum transcrotal, this is already done from both sides. Then paraneoplastic neural antibody squared, which is negative. This panel was done, which is, there is no, it's not, it's negative. The common disease were all done. So what do you want to do now? Sir, spinal cord imaging, sir. Why is, why is spinal cord? Because common mutations which we can see in Many probably five six cases I have seen. This is called the mostly called mitochondrial DNA inhibition syndrome. You can see sensitive vaccine neuropathy, dysarthria, ophthalmoparesis, and prognosis of the Okay, so when you get a syndrome like that, rather than confining yourself to see or to think of, well, this is at least partly people. You can give a mitochondrial cocktail at least we can find in these patients. Actually, similar patient, 32 year old man. See, let's see this person, almost similar, but there's some difference. He came with unsteadiness in walking for the last three years. And he has some uncomfortable feeling while watching any objects for a long period of time. It's three episodes of motor accidents in the form of a vehicle on the left side over the last six months. It's the findings. He has got ശ്രമിച്ചേക്കിട്ട് <laughs> <laughs> സയൻസ് ഇവിടെ ഇല്ല ഓക്സിജൻ <laughs> <laughs> Our normal in the Dapran Yogi, unlike the previous patient, all details were absent. Sensations were impaired in both upper and lower limb, in their post-colonial sensations. Thrombus is strongly positive and what is possible to take a vaccine. 
he said since the condition lower and upper and lower limb his mri was normal so what is likely diagnosis here duration sir duration is 5 years i was 3 years looks like a previous case sir exactly so this is the this is actually the more common than the previous one which i have seen but this called miras mitochondrial i mean my receive uh, attack syndrome that is very common uh, it is in airless state common so as the genome testing was done this again showed positive policy mutations So, only mutation can take various percentage. One type of dominant sensory attacks here, with the cerebellar, other with the cerebellar, with peripheral neuropathy, less of peripheral neuropathy. Most of them have external obstacles also. This is another boy. Total of them here. Tired. Are we going to do it? At the third. Can no more get it? Can no more get it? Can no more get it? ൂട്ടേഷൻ the polyglot related disorders are a continuous series of overlapping phenotypes that can be clinically classified in the six subgroups involving multiple organs and a variable severity age of onset can present very from infancy to late adulthood this is generally called as tower now as mitochondrial dna depletion syndrome it is recognized for the most one of the commonest inherited mitochondrial disorders so there are six types one is the alpers and if i will run through that maybe more into the whole distance alpers certain locker syndrome that is specific in some of the inherited sympathetic failure manifesting in childhood second type is called childhood myocerebral hyperplasia characteristic development and delay dementia hyperplasia related to pride electricity process there is myoclonic epilepsy with myopathy and sensory called mmsa myopathy epilepsy myopathy and sensory epilepsy now that two patients the patient which we have seen the road have myopathy this particular entity can have myopathy his characteristics is that some of the patients with myopathy epilepsy myopathy epilepsy with hypoplasia It also covers a disorder that is previously described as paralysis of the axis with epilepsy. Fourth is the category which is commonly seen here, that is epilepsy and neuropathy spectrum (ANS). May include two previously described diseases, that's called mitochondrial processive epilepsy syndrome called MDS, and sensory epilepsy, neuropathy, dysarthria, and nocturnal dementia, the Sandoz type. As key features, attacks in neuropathy have been found in about ninety percent of the patients with with ALS. That is, attacks in neuropathy spectrum. Other main features include seizures, orthopedic pain, but clinical neuropathy is rare. Lastly, lastly, autosomal dominant. Who is autosomal dominant? Progressive extra orthopedic pain. There is no process of the basis and the list may be. The clinical phenotypes include possible myosin weakness, neuropathy, ataxia, and abstract cardiomyopathy and depression. This is previously called chronic progressive osteoporosis. Plus, has been merged into this particular into of polyglot mutation. The autosomal recessive progressive osteoporosis is here. Same characteristic characteristics are also there, but more more similar features compared to the previous one. So that is about this entity or the condition. Is any questions? Sir, is there any specific treatment, sir, for polyar? Uh, generally, mitochondrial disorders we give what you call mitochondrial cocktail. That means uh, coenzyme Q, 
high dose of ribopropylene and multi other multivitamin and things like that. So to and this this scope yeah, these vitamins have the scope factors in the capsid cases. So they give high dose mega vitamin therapy. Some of them do improve even though partially. Should we put it in this case? <clears throat> there's no questions. Yes, sir. Yeah. Any clinical point to differentiate from SCSR, spinal cerebral lab? Um, very difficult. The only thing is that orthodontal PJ, when you get orthodontal PJ along with that, it's a thing of the condition. Other, thing either, other things are all produced usually through saccades, particular saccades. And what orthodontal PJ then just like that. But some of the ACS can produce often PGS, but usually say it right. Okay, this said this. This is a story of a 56 year old female. Long history is there. The company started five months back as facial deviation of the left with the inability to close the right. She was put on treatment and the facial pulse improved. One month later, that is four months back, the patient noticed pain and numbness over both shoulder region, which descended to the anterior posterior chest and exactly a crash like this. Pain in numbers has been persisting till the time of resolution. That has been accepted. Around the same time, that is one four months back, we should also notice numbers over the both forehead, which later spread to the cheek and jaw, only the entire time in one week's time. And that slowly improved in two weeks' time. She is then is bilateral. There is unilateral cystic bilateral, we don't know because that complaint is not there now. And we do not know what treatment the patient had taken at them. One month back, patient noticed buckling of her right knee while walking, as well as loosening of the child from the right foot, and numbness of both lower limb extending under the knees. One week back, she noticed hoarseness of voice along with difficulty in swallowing and nasal limitation. So this is the long story. I will go back to the story once again. First complete fibers back has right and left facial from which he wrote. Four months back, and one month later, she had developed pain and numbness for the chest and shoulder region in a genetic fashion. And that complaint is persisting even though. Again, the same time, purpose back patient numbness on the face and back, from which she got tea, almost got tea, improved with pain. Then, one month back, patient got his marking of the right knee, that is persisting even now, while walking, as well as losing the chakra from the right foot, and numbness of both lower limbs extending out of the knees. One week back, she noticed hoarseness of voice, along with the swallowing and nasal limitations. <coughs> This is the story. Okay, so two complaints improved. Initial facial elevation and numbness of the face improved. What remains is three things. One is that um, uh, the bacteria uh, the knee and weakness of the right lower limb and uh, hoarseness of voice and the previous complaint of numbness and pain that we like to see. So this is on a summation. Oakland movements were normal. Okay. 
DTR, biceps would be the normal, biceps also is suitable, slightly less compared to the biceps of the right. Finger pressure is actually insidable on the right, it's just insidable. DJK is over, totally absent. And which is the normal. Ability for the absent on the right side, band up, mute. Sensory system, increased pain from C6 downward. There is hyperesthesia from D2 to D6. Vibration normal in the upper and lower limb. Your answer is normal in the upper limb, perhaps in lower limb. From this positive, pain, broad based pain, we query tagging on the right limb. So if you want to tell the findings once again, I'll show the findings once again. This is the findings on the cranial nerves. Right fifth nerve plus right tenth nerve. In the motor system, right lower limb is weak. DTR, upper limb is all insensible. Both knee checks were absent. And check, normally insensible. Abdominal plus absent on the right side, and are mute. Sensory, just having an upper limb distal part is impaired. There is a microsthesia from D2 to D6. Vibration normal in the upper limb. GP is normal in the upper limb in the over the toes. Thrombus positive. So where do you want to localize the niche? Sir, so, uh, mononeuritis multiplex is uh, purely L element, uh, mostly element syndrome. Except for the dragging of the uh, one yeah, lower limb. Yeah. That may not be correct. Sometimes the patient may be walking very hesitantly. Dragging may be she was walking to a dragging both sides. We are not very sure. Correct. We, we just, uh, we just uh, rem remitting and uh, relapsing occurring over, over the past few months. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because uh, she has a uh, seventh now, then uh, uh, fifth now, tenth now, and that too in a multiple nerve distribution. Some are more affected, some are less affected. So, something like a mononeuritis multiplex would be high on the list. Okay. Okay. Any other possibility? Uh, sir, multi axial lesion, sir. 
ஜங்ஷன்ஸ் <laughs> In, uh, in the part of the involvement of the thoracic cord, I can agree with you. In the medullary lesion, I can agree with you. But, but you, what is the point favoring a medullary lesion or a pondy lesion? Because uh, sir. It, it can be peripheral also. It need not necessarily be centered. Sir, uh, what's really affected? We have one is affected. No other structures are affected. But if it is peripheral, Peripheral, the right hip flexors and the right dorsiflexors alone, how can it be affected? And the uh, spastic leg, right spastic. Right. So that is not due to the medullary lesion, can be due to thoracic cord lesion. I don't say peripheral, the central lesion is there. What I'm trying to say is that the 10th and 50th, there is no, I mean, there is no, nothing besides that to be in the, in the central part of the main stem. Spinal cord lesion again, spinal everything if it is in the middle. Thank you. Sir, okay. so what is the point favoring a cord lesion? Sir, yes, but the sensory level, level, sir. Often yeah. the sensory in mind. Yeah, then so what is your sensory level on the torso? When you get that thing, it almost truly points to when they're gone. Second thing, other point favoring strongly in internal lease, which has got a suspended sensory level, and hyperacies in that level. That's the initial complaint also. So, let us see that is point number three. But let's, even if you don't take that point, there is another strong point favoring internal lease. Can you tell me that? Spinal tract of trigeminal nerve. Sir. Yeah, that is spinal tract. Spinal tract. Spinal tract. No, that, that can be not necessarily be in the uh, tract, maybe in the fifth, even now itself. And how is it suffected? The point is that that uh, right enzyme involvement plus listening tract of trigeminal nerve can also produce that can this kind of a finding. Agreed. That's a possibility. In the lower medulla, Plus, I have the least in this area of the dosage of oxygen is made. So, it goes in the end of the day. Find out this. My question was not there. What is the point favoring in the relation of the thoracic cord? Apart from the trunkal sensory level and the jacket. The reflex, sir. 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 Very good. That's the point. See, he has got weakness of the right level. ஒன்லிஷன்ஸ்டன்ஸ்டன்ஸ்டன்ஸ்டன்ஸ்டன்ஸ்டன்ஸ்டன்ஸ்டன்ஸ்டன்ஸ்டன்ஸ்டன்
involving mainly descending down road to the right top of the road. Other leaves at 5th now and 10th together, lower meadow is a good possibility. Or it can be peripheral now in more than that. But on the same side, it's now still the main step. Yes, no other findings like any stagnus or anything in the sense to the acceleration of the brain stem. Okay, that's it's a little tough case. Any other possibility anyone would or like to keep optimization base? Okay. Sir, one doubt, sir. Yeah, please. Just like this uh, trigeminal root entry zone, is there something like uh, in the uh, 12th now also? Any root entry zone kind of? Yeah, but here 12th now is not affected, 10th now you mean. Root entry is not Multiple radical involvement, sir. Okay, multiple radical involvement agreed, but the points again is that is there. So we need a L involvement plus L depending in this way. And you have to think of radical plus rather than multiple now. That's a possibility of keeping in But the point is that there are some points favoring an interpolation of the cord. Or cord you want because they're going to sense real. And a well situable angle check with weakness. And that's the thing, another point we have to keep in mind. away from it. Okay, and they're complaining that jacket like a dissociated anesthesia was there. The, 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 I don't dissociate me. Jacket like sensory loss was the most initial. It does not have to blow in my colleague. It was only complaining about the initial. Taking that point also and the extent. This is right at right side abdominal place is absent and the is listening down to the two three segment implicate angle check loss and knee check loss and the weakness on that side. That's the point space which we think more likely and interval limitation. Okay. Any questions? Yes. So, what investigation you want to do? And this is your decision. These are the questions. So, you want MRI done, no? Brain. Let's see the MRI brain. This is the player. The brain was, let me see, it's no order. The dorsal cord, you find hyperlensity, lead hyperlensity in the dorsal cord. Sandhya is standing down. Contrast study. I don't know how this line is coming up here. Is somebody drawing that? I don't know. Jayanti Lal. This is the contrast of Marin. And what you find is that there is an enhancement of the 10th and on the right side. Spinal cord contrast norm. It's a contrast study of the spinal cord. And in the number region, there is some suspicion enhancement of the root here. So, what do you want to do next? Yes, 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 study for yes, yes. So, in fact, we I expected a little more longer intermodular release. It's only simple, and it is only like a, a dilated cell, not a not a release which we expected. It is a bit more uh, large release. And um, instead of the brainstem, we probably can now be subject because we, the enhancement was seen on the in the antenna oxide. What no list was seen in the middle now. Probably the roots may be affected because then there's some enhancement. So other investigations that are not 
Case level is 93, that is within normal limits. CSF 1476.9, only elevated. CSF glucose is normal, cells normal. CSF AC level was also normal. So what do you want to do now? Never condition study, sir. Uh, there are conditions. Well, you, 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 did you suspect a patient in this patient? Uh, just look uh, for a sensory condition. Yeah, that we can do. If we have, if you have, I mean, to find a radical for the FA population, like this FA can be done. But anyway, anyway, that was done. So we see the CSF. It is. Not detected. Not detected. So, what do you, what else you want to do now? Excellent. Even excellent. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So, we did a in fact MRI of the chest. We showed multiple bilateral. But multiple bilateral high largeness. We do want to do now. Biopsy, sir. Biopsy yes. from the yes. So, in fact, in fact, in the MRI, when you take the MRI, that is a suspicion there here. So, we when I went ahead with the CT of the chest, I don't the multiple high largeness. So then we had trans-endoprogyl biopsy was done. We showed trans-endoprogyl lymphadenitis. It's a sarcoidosis. Even though ACW was normal, both in the serum and CSR, that's what we must have done. And this patient was put on steroid and had a remarkable improvement of everything subsided, almost subsided in two months' time. So two, uh, two weeks later, she was normal, excessive positive, and mild positive. Okay. Sir, uh, in sarcoid, can you get uh, neuropathy as well as uh, root involvement, both? Yeah, sarcoid is one condition which can affect the part of the nervous system. There are certain commonest site, like for example, in the cellular region, hypothalamic area, and in the spinal cord, it affects the pile region, by joining the spinal cord, pile, as far as pile and subtile region. And the lane stem anywhere can affect the same brain so outside the brain stem. So could produce something unique in a vast is within the brain, small, small hyperintensions. In the DNS, it can produce root involvement, it can produce protein involvement, even muscle also can get affected. Or sarcoid so, in fact, is no, there's no part of the brain, uh, CNS or PNS, which is not, which is made by sarcoid. Here, the patient might be pain in the moment. They can activate skin or sarcoid. Then, uh, a spinal cord, pia, which can be involved onto the spinal cord, can occur. Central lesion spinal cord can occur in sarcoid. Basically, the lesion in the spinal cord and joint get uh, remain adjacent, adjacent to the pia. So called pine and sign. Partly because the she must have received steroid earlier, that is why the spinal cord lesions are on the seat in the we examine the patient. So, sir, lymphoma is also another uh, differential, sir. Definitely, lymphoma is also a difference. Are you seeing some line the drawing in the, the, in the uh, here, the uh, uh, yellow line? Or I'm only seeing that thing. There is a line, sir. So Someone is. Yeah. Yeah, how, 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 how does it come in my screen? I don't know. Maybe some of the... <laughs> Is it possible for, from your side to do 
somebody from the other side can do it like that i do not know online ghost sir online ghost okay online ghost okay this case is going to remain now till they are presented that's unfortunate okay tell me stop here and go for one more case one more case sir okay one more short case this is a cheaper old lady she came to me 3 years back with this tube but they got repeated forms examination she had slowing of all the cases especially the and generally second is in postal imbalance i had not much doubt about the diagnosis this is about his psp so many psp people they come to you as what they want because they go to the ed people telling that it is disease which is making you go up in there so dear diagnosed a psp she was put on sindopa and the symptoms improved partially and the patient and the patient is very happy that she was so called what they was not in such Actually, the walking difficulty actually worsened on treatment. Her increase in the dose of leave of her walking difficulty improved again. Actually, dose was stepped up to send up a two tablet QI. Each patient developed orofacial and limb dyskinesis. It made me doubt why a PSP patient should have PSP. The last thing teaching is that in the PSP patient, even in the late stage, silly whatever they would develop. I have not seen you pay with PSP patient develop dyskinesia. The MSC patient they develop dyskinesia, especially the oral history. Basically, they are seeing idiopathic pain. I thought this is quite unusual for PSP. So then, key question came is it something like a PSP PD that particular variety which you don't know, but there was no asymmetric tremor or asymmetric degenerative. So it's something typically like a PSP, but in this case, so you get the video. Okay, okay. 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 ോട്ട് <laughs> <laughs> മോളിലോട്ട് <laughs> 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 ശരിയാണ്ലി <laughs> Then patient was examined again. The examination done. Mama, you don't know Mama. You don't know Mama. You don't know Mama. You don't know Mama. Try to look to the right side. Now left side. Up. Down. Down. Up. Down. Okay, Mama. Keep it like that. He's got his best. ഞാൻ തിരുവനന്തപുരത്ത് താമസിക്കുന്ന പറഞ്ഞേക്കെട്ടെ 
So this time, in the neural examiner revealed in coordination both the prelims and the apex, which was not there before. So what did she have it? She had initially supplied nucleic age pulse C with Parkinson's on the sun. She improved. Then she developed a uh, SKC on the apex. Then she developed a taxi. Like MSAC, sir. Okay, MSAC is possible, but here's what initially presented with the supreme clay case pass. PSPC, sir. It could be PSPC or MSC, whatever it is. It's one po these are the possibility. But usually in MSA, they don't develop a PIM disk in the CS1 I never seen the PSP developing that. That's MSA developing or officially scanning as you not LIM disk in the LIM pulse. So take what you see in classical in the parking services. Okay, so little confusion. Any metabolic abnormalities? Um, it's a long duration, I did not suspect the metabolic. Anyway, I did investigate at that point of time. I did this in the first time I thought I will investigate it. So, I was thinking it's the PSPC or MSAS, both all of you suspected it. But we points out against either. So, MRI was done. See, the MRI shows the mod feed is signed. See, in MSA, I put your mods. I put your disability. Something like a hot cross bun, protein entropy, and cellular entropy. It's also midbrain entropy as well. The morning glory sign is the same. So here, the bonds of protein entropy is much more than that of a midbrain. So, what is this condition? One is it, is it a combination of PSP and MSC? One is it, over the one is a single table. I do not know. What do you think? Your opinion? So the corpus callum is also very thin. Yeah, correct. Right. Uh, she has no autonomic involvement. The MRI picture was something mimicking more like an MSC. Initially presented with no MSC picture at all, presented with supranuclear gaze pulse. I do not know. So that so any time you no know, clinically there is overlap which cannot which is beyond what, what is described in the test book. So, so can this be some additional uh, vernicus uh, encephalopathy? I mean uh, ver vernicus syndrome. I mean. <laughs> I mean, there's no hypertensity. No, MRI picture is not at all such a one case possible because usually they have been variably fine the lesions of the hypertensity in the mammary, the body, dose of the That's not the decision. But if you have to the bonds and to feel the mild mm extent. -hmm. And the course is gradually progressive over years.
or some paraneoplasies or additional yeah, that, that, yeah that possibility can be used to be kept in mind because I did not do that at that time. The release was cut long more than people were years, so I did not do that. That's a possibility you have to keep. I mean, there was a typicality you have to keep that possibility. But this, can the paraneoplastical produce this kind of gross uh, structural abnormalities of the brain? It's also a condition. Paraneoplastic can produce atrophy, but not to this extent. Right now. Anyway, that's the interesting case. Sir, uh, Parkinson's system can be a paraneoplasm manifestation. Yes, yes, of course, they can be, definitely. Any movement disorder can be paraneoplasm, can be my clown, the story, everything can be paraneoplasm. So, maybe it's a baseline, a baseline PSP on top of which maybe uh, some, this, this like, I mean, was one of the possibilities, I guess. <laughs> That possibility can be superadded some other lesion because in cerebral atrophy we can't be remembered. But the curious what was striking was this MRA picture was something which is discreetly missing. See the cloud cross mount sign as well as the Mount Fuji sign. It's probably difficult to discuss in the universe. And that would be the cerebral limit center. In fact, showed the movement disorders, especially they also cannot say what it is. See the atrophy of the bonds? Yes, sir. I don't know. I must say C or P is cerebellar. Sir, any possibility for cerebellar, uh, sorry, mitochondrial cytopathy, sir, which we can, because... This is the chronic condition. No, no, very unlikely. Mitochondrial disease can produce atrophy, but... Pattern, like you may like continue to face more like the same language. Yes. And it was not often pretty pretty deep passing. It was almost like a fairly deep Okay. Yeah, you look for that sign, sir, which you tell now, sir, while well, uh, getting up from lying down position. Yeah, yeah right. You uh, described it. Uh, and no, that I mean, this case is even prior to that they described. Sir. For it. In fact, I checked two, three patients in my OPD subsequently. They also had this eyes on sailing sign. I did not take note of it. I saw that. Yes. Shall we close? In the question, shall we close? Okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good night. Good night, sir. Thank you. Good night. Good night, sir. Thank you. Good night, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. See you next week. Next week, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, sir.